Hello there everyone, it's Carol from the Crafty Emporium again. So we're on to day five of the Stamping Up Use It Up um, projects because we're coming to the end of the 2019 catalogue. So as I've said before, if you want to purchase any of these items, then you can go to my blog and have a look and find the material lists there with the codes of the products that I'm going to be using. If you go to the Stamping Up website, you will need to find a demonstrator and you will need to enter my name, Carol Tinson, but you will need to be from the UK or Europe to be able to order directly from myself. If you're from America, then you will need to find an American demonstrator. And you can actually click on find a demonstrator and then you get to choose by choosing someone's name who you know or you can choose a demonstrator near to you and they will find one for you, okay? Well, you'll need to get in quick if you want these because as i say they will be ending at the end of may very very beginning of june all right so today's little project although it's coming to you later today than the previous videos that i've done and that is because the product that i was going to show you sold out <laughs> so you can't get it anymore so let's have a bit of a rethink and a redo um so what i want to show you today is how to make six of these little notelet booklets okay and we're only going to make it from two sheets two sheets of 12 by 12 that's all we need to make six of these and some scraps okay so that's what I'm going to show you now then what I'm actually going to be using is and I'll just go through the products with you first is this cardstock here is the 12 by 12 and it's called Pear Pizzazz, which is a really beautiful shade of green. Now then, you can order just the pack of this cardstock on its own if you wish, or you can buy the total collection, which is the Subtles collection. And it's an array of 10 different colors and you get two sheets of each. So you get a total of 20 sheets in the pack if you go for the Subtles collection, all right? But this particular color is Pear Pizzazz. Now, the patterned papers that I'm using are these, or these. this is part of, in fact, I think I'm one sheet missing, which is which is two sheets missing, which are, no, one sheet missing, which is over there, which is a piece of vellum. Um, so this is from the paper pack called Floral Romance. Right, so you get two two different um, patterned papers. All right, so you've got this lovely leaf green one, and then on the back, it's like floorboards. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit darker in here. I've had to pull all my blinds and my curtains shut because the sun's really bright in here today, and you wouldn't get to see anything at all. So it's this lovely like floorboard grey sort of colours on the back, but the lovely leaf pattern on the front. And then this is the other sheet that's in there, which this is the back of it, which is the peachy colours and greys and whites speckled. And then on the other side is another leaf pattern also in greens. And then you get two different types of vellum sheets. Let me lay on top of the plane see if you can see it better. It's very, very subtly patterned, this one. Now, I'm not going to show you the other one because that's for tomorrow's project, all right? But very, very pretty. So today's project is going to be about using the plain green. And then I'm flipping this one over and I'm going to use this peachy colour. So those are the two that I'm actually going to be using for this project. But as you can see here, I used this one and I used Mossy Meadow as the plain card. Okay. These will come into play later. So those are the two sheets that I'm going to be using. So this is from the Subtles collection called Pear Pizzazz, and this is from Floral Romance, the paper collection. All right, oh, that's what I didn't tell you. So in the paper collection, you get, let's see if I can remember. Uh, so there's two different cards, and you get three sheets of each. 
and then there's two different vellums and you get three sheets of each. So there's 12 sheets all together in the pack. That was what I wanted to tell you. Okay, so let's make a start. Get your pen and paper out, make a note. But remember, you don't need to. You can go across to the blog and find all the information there. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is with this 12 by 12 piece of plain cardstock, I'm going to cut it in half at six inches. Okay, so six inches, cut it in half. I'm going to put that one to one side for a minute because I'm going to, what I'm going to do on here, you will repeat with this one. And I'm not going to cut all of them now. So then we're going to spin it round and we're going to cut it at four inches. Sorry, I'm trying to get it into shot for you. Four inches. So four, slide it along and another four. And then this last one will be four. So we've already got three of our covers right there already. And then if I repeat that with this other piece, then I will have six covers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to score these in half. So half of six is three. So I'm going to score at three. And then I'm just going to fold it in half. I'm not going to burnish it at this stage. Three. Fold it in half. Again, don't burnish at this stage. And three. So what you could actually do with these is you could actually get a little bit of a production line going. So you could cut out all your covers first. Okay, so that's the first bit done. The next bit then is your actual paper that you're going to use. Okay, so from this patterned paper, we're going to cut a strip that's three and three quarter inches wide. So three and three quarters. Make sure I'm butt up so that I'm nice and square. Okay, so I will be able to cut three of those out of this one 12 by 12 sheet of paper all right but again i'm not going to cut these up now i'm just going to demonstrate with this one piece then we're going to spin it and we're going to cut four of these pieces at two and three quarter inches so there's one slide it across there's two Slide it across. Three. And four. Okay, so we've now got four pieces from that one strip. And two of those are needed for each cover. Okay, so you have one cover and two of those. So these two will be for the my next cover. So I'll put them in there so that they can stay together. All right. Now, at this point, you can corner round these if you wish. Now, as I've said before, I don't have all the gadget gadgetry. That's quite difficult to say when you haven't got your dentures in right all the gadgetry from stamping up just yet so i have the because i'm new to this i've still got a lot of things that i need to buy um but we'll get there eventually so i'm using an old corner rounder at the moment okay so those two will adhere to the front of my cover now if I wanted to, I could corner round the corners of my book cover as well, but I'm not going to. And then these will eventually stick onto that front cover there, all right? But we're not going to do that just yet. A bit more cutting to do. So again, if you're doing a production line, you could cut all your covers out and then you could cut all the cover mats up and get those ready, all right? Next thing we're going to do, and this is the only thing that you'll need to really add 
to um, to your list of material requirements is a sheet of writing paper. Okay, um, plain copy of paper, fancy copy of paper, cream copy of paper. It's entirely up to you. Now, this is a really nice paper that I got from our local scrap store. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using, and it's actually quite thick. Now, I'll tell you now that three sheets of A4 create enough pages for two of the books. All right. So you'll need three sheets for every two books. But I'm just going to demonstrate cutting for one. So the first cut that we're going to make is at five and a half inches. OK, then we're going to slide that across. And again, we're going to cut that at five and a half inches. And that's the only bit of scrap I'm going to end up with. Okay, then I can put those two together. So they were cut that way. And then I'm going to spin them round. And the next cut that I'm going to do is at three and three quarter inches. And slide that across. And again, do three and three quarter inches. All right. Now then, from those three sheets, it ends up giving you one, two, three, four, five, six sheets of paper to have in your book. And then it gives you another six pieces of paper to have in your book. All right. So that's why three sheets of paper creates you these two lots of pages for your notebook. So I'm going to put one to the side for now. So I'll make those up later. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these in half. And I'm going to do this manually rather than putting them through the um, my score pal thing I can't think of the word because to actually get the central measurement for this pain in the bum so it's just easier to just fold them in half I mean once you've found a centre point it's easier but um it's actually, it's just like a sixteenth of an inch off. So, I just find it's one of those methodical little jobs that you can do whilst you're watching the TV or something. But always make sure that your fingers are clean when you're doing this because you're pressing it with your finger like this. If you've got a mucky finger, you're going to muck up your pages. Okay, so I've now got six folded little sheets and I'm going to sit them inside of each other. I knew I'd forget something. I've forgotten my binder clips. So I'm going to have to go and get those, but I won't be a minute. So let's sit them in there first. Okay. So there's my six little pages. Now what I can do is before I slot them all together, I can again corner round those before I actually put them all together in a booklet format all right just bear with me i'm going to get me binder clips as i say i only want to forget something The reason why we haven't, you know, burnished this fold is we're going to lay it open and then I'm going to open up my pages but make sure that they're all grouped together and then I'm going to sit them so that the creases of the pages and the crease of the cover meet up and I've got an even border at each end and at the top and bottom. And then I'm just going to bind them with a clip. Top and bottom, two clips, one on each side. 
right? And I want it flat. I don't want it bent, okay? I want it flat. And can you see what it's doing there, how it's separating the pages? That's because it's not flat. And that's where you can start to get a little bit of a problem. So they need to be flat. Now I'm just going to poke it with my pokey tool, but you can get a mat to put underneath if you wish. So about oh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch maybe from the bottom. And you can measure if you wish. I'm not going to because there's just no point. I'm just going to poke a hole through that center point where the crease mark is okay so can you see that and then I'm going to do the same at the top do 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 yeah back there and if you're going to put your fingers behind make sure you've left them apart like that because you don't want this is where the mat comes in handy so it's going to poke through there and because I've got the binder clips holding all the papers in place my holes should fall on that spine bit at the back where the crease is. Now I've got some sturdy thread here and it's no fancy schmancy stitching, it's just a straight up and down. My scissors, look, I forgot my scissors. I'm trying to do it with my teeth, that's not happening. There we go. Okay, so I have got a little bit like a darning needle. You want it sort of big enough to be able to go through the hole, but not too big that it's going to create a much bigger hole. So I'm just popping it down. Okay, and I'm leaving a tail. And then I'm turning it over and I'm popping it down the other hole. And because the binder clips are holding that paper in place, it means that the holes are really easy to find. And then I'm going to tie a knot and I'm going to rest my finger on top of it. And then I'm going to wrap the thread round again. And this time I'm going to go through the loop twice once twice and then pull it in and then you get to a point where you can remove your finger okay and that's enough to just hold your papers in place all right now i've left a lot there because i can do a little bow if i so wish i'm going to remove the binder clips and I can now see about adding the covers. Now I have two choices here. On this one, I actually put the ribbon on the outside and then decorated on top of the ribbon. The other choice is to actually put the ribbon underneath where the mat is going to go so that it's hidden. And all you've got then is the ribbon that extends beyond, all right? Personally, I like the ribbon on the top. I think it's prettier. Now, the other thing that I wanted to point out as well was can you see how you can see the thread here? If you actually close it up and use your old olive, because I'm using the grain stamping up pad, I can just run my ink along on top of that thread and it will colour up the thread so that you now can't really see it. By the same token, I would then need to ink all the way around the outer edge of the cover as well to let it match, because otherwise it will look odd that just the spine is inked up and nothing else. Okay. Now, because this is still open and flat at the moment, I'm going to put my mats on top. And in fact, I'm going to corner around these because I just think it looks a little bit nicer. Oh, in fact, I already did it, didn't I? I did it earlier. Oh, saved myself a job there, Carol. 
There we go. Okay. Let's put these on here. Now you can use your tape runners, but I prefer to use the glue because I want to make sure that that is going to stay. And I'm just going to place one on one side and one on the other. And the nice thing about the Tombow glue is that you don't actually need a lot. It's a really strong, oh, big globby bit come out there. It's a really strong glue, so you don't actually need an awful lot of it. So it goes a long way. And then I'm going to line it up again on the back side but again just make sure that it matches up top and bottom so that I can see that it's running along the same line okay so that's the first part of my little book done now my ribbon as I say still haven't got all the materials yet so I'm just using some seam binding that I've got so I wanted a fair tail at this end and then I'm going to plop a little bit of glue in the middle there that the ribbon will sit on top of. Okay, so just a little tiny dollop of glue in the middle, middle for diddle. Okay, and that will just hold that ribbon in place. I'm not worried about it seeping through a bit because I'm going to be sitting something on top of that and then I'm going to wrap the ribbon around the back okay so we'll bring it all over to this side now i haven't stuck the back of it down yet but i will be okay so that's the ribbon there now then i punched out a um scalloped circle and i'm just going to ink up the edge of the scallop because I just think it helps to define it when you're sitting it on top of something. So I'm just going to put a circle of glue on that and that will sit on top of the ribbon. So that will now also help to hold that ribbon in place. Okay. And then I'm going to, where's my scrap bit gone? It's all hiding from me. I know I bought a piece over. Oh, it's there. <laughs> it was hiding. Now, as you've seen, I've used this punch a lot. Can you tell I like it? Um, I think that this particular punch, I think that you'll find that you'll use this a lot because it's just so great to have a big butterfly and a little butterfly and butterflies are just great for adding that little bit of an extra dimensional bit on top of a, a card, a booklet, a journal, tiny bit of glue on the back, put me flutter by at a slightly jaunty angle. And then the other thing that I did was, again, from a scrap piece of the vellum, that patterned vellum paper, I'm just going to dink it on the body. And then I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue on the back of its body. And then that will sit on there. Now the glue you can see at the moment, but it will dry clear. But actually where we've glued the two bodies together, is where we're going to be putting the gemstones anyway. So I'm just going to push that down. Lift his wings up a bit. And then I'm going to do a little dollop of glue on the back. In the centre. To just hold that ribbon in place. And then just whilst that's setting off going to punch me another big butterfly so yeah I think that this one will be very popular and will be used over and over and over again and it's great for using up you know like all your little scraps 
it's brilliant for that. You're a bit like, oh, what do I do with all them scraps? Punch out some butterflies. Okay, I'm just going to add that little butterfly on the back there. And then on the front here, I've got another little, little tiny vellum butterfly. So I'm going to add that on there as well. It's just falling off the circle as so though it's flying away. Mummy's going, come back, come back, acid. And then chop that ribbon off. Now these, as I say, you can tie into a nice bow. I'm going to leave them for now because I don't think you need to see me doing a bow, do you? I think you all know how to do a bow. And then these will tie up on the outside here. Nice little bow. See, I've left myself with enough ribbon today. I didn't leave myself with enough, enough ribbon the other day, did I? I was struggling to do my bow. There we go. Then I can pull it in a little. My bow is too big. And then I can trim off any excess. Imagine those strings bits aren't there and then dimensionals that's another sort of must-have really because they just come in for adding that tiny bit of bling so I will list the uh, reference number on the blog for some bling as well see that bling just makes all the difference to this. And I'm going to add one on there. So there you go. Those are my two little notebooklets. But as I say, from two 12 by 12 sheets and some A4 copy paper, you can get six, yeah, six of these little mini notebooks. I mean, ideal for a craft fair or what ideal for a stocking filler for Christmas or birthdays or oh, well you get the idea the list is endless isn't it okay I think I'm done for today that was a nice short and sweet one hope you've enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing what you create and I'll see you all again soon and don't forget go to the blog go to the shop see you all tomorrow bye